So today we are doing fiber to fabric in which we will be studying about the plant fiber jute. Jute is a plant fiber. This is a class in continuation with the first session where we had done about the cotton fiber. Now we look into the second fiber which is jute. We have seen a lot of jute ropes around us which is very commonly seen in Indian markets. Jute crop is grown just like any other crop in the fields and you can see it is a tall crop and it is even more taller than the people over here. Jute crop is initially green in color. The cultivation of jute takes place around March and April. It is the seed is sown during March and April and it is grown in rainy season usually. Uh, it, the places in India where it is grown is West Bengal, Bihar and Assam and you see the field is filled with water. That's the reason that it is having, it is grown in a place where the rainy season is on after April as the monsoon proceeded, proceeds towards that, those regions. So cultivation of jute is done in the months of March and April, especially in West Bengal, Bihar and Assam and it is done in the rainy season because a lot of water is required for this crop to grow. Then when is the harvesting done? Harvesting is done means the cutting of the jute crop is done to obtain the jute fiber at the time the farmer sees the yellow flower growing in it. When the yellow flower starts appearing in the field in the jute plant that's the time the farmer knows that it is the time to cut the crop. So the yellow flowers when appear is the time that the, the crop has to be harvested. The plants are cut or harvested during the flowering stage because the good quality of jute comes from a young stem. So it is the time when the flower appears that harvesting of the crop would be done and that's the time when the stem is really young. If that time, at that time harvesting is not done, then the jute cannot be obtained. Why? Because if the stem becomes older, then it becomes really hard and it is difficult to remove the fibers from it. So the time at which we can harvest the jute crop is the flowering stage. So you can just have a look how the farmers are cutting the crop. They are using a sickle and they are removing uh, these uh, crops from the field and once the harvesting is done after harvesting the stalks of the plant are tied into bundles you see these bundles are here these bundles are tied and then they are immersed in water they collect some water or they put it in the pond and they immerse these bundles in the stagnant water for around 20 days and this is done for letting the fiber get separated from the stem. So in the stagnant water, the stem of the jute plant rots. The stem starts rotting. Rotting means it is getting decomposed and the fiber gets separated. So the harvesting is done. After the harvesting is done, the crop is then tied into bundles and these bundles are then immersed in water, stagnant water, which can be a pond or a lake not lay pond and or if pond is not available they just fill the space with the water for or in little uh, half of their legs and then they immerse these jute bundles in that water for 20 days and in that time the jute plant stem is going to get rotten as the rottening will happen the fiber will get separated so the process of separation of jute fiber from its stem by immersing it in the stagnant water body is called retting. So retting is the process which is going to happen when these bundles were immersed in the stagnant water. So when the, uh, the jute bundles was, were immersed in the stagnant water, it started rotting and the process by which the fiber got separated from the stem that process is called retting. So retting is the process of separation of jute fiber 
from its stem by immersing in the water bodies. So after the retting is done, we have obtained, this is the fiber that is obtained. You can see this fiber being not kept over here. These are the unused portions and these are the fibers that are obtained after the retting. What are the various places where we are using jute? Jute is being used in gunny bags, sacks, carpet, curtains, shopping bags, table mats and what not. We have lot many things that are made up of jute. Other useful plant fibers that are in our syllabus, we just need to remember their names are coir and hemp. Coir is obtained from the coconut fiber. If you have seen an old coconut, it has a lot of brownish hard structure over it which is used to obtain coir, which is then again used to make some ropes. Other one more important um, fiber that is there in our syllabus is flax. Flax is used to obtain a linen linen cloth linen you have heard of linen linen fabrics so linen is obtained from flax flax is again a crop grown and from after harvesting the uh, fiber is obtained from it and is converted into linen fiber uh, fabric so flax it is a plant fiber used to obtain linen Examples of some unstitched fabrics that we use in our day-to-day -day life and in India especially are sari, dhoti and turban. This is sari, this is dhoti and this is turban. These are all unstitched fabrics. When you obtain fabric and then you are using it to cover your body parts, then it is unstitched fabric. Okay. But when you are cutting and sewing it and you are changing that fabric into a cloth or you are changing into a dress, then we say it is a stitched fabric. So unstitched fabric that we are using in our uh, culture are sari, dhoti and turban. They are not stitched from any side and they are being used uh, to cover the body parts. This is the last topic of our chapter which is history of clothing. How the clothing had started right from early man. See the first thing that was seen was the barks and big leaves of trees and animal skins and furs were, were worn by the people, the early man, the man. So the first thing that we did was that we had taken this animal skin or the fur or we took the big leaves and barks and we covered our body with that. Second thing, the people began to settle into the agricultural communities. They learned to weave and then when they had weaved some twigs and grasses, they could make some baskets and mats. So this was the next step to the uh, evolution of uh, getting fabrics. So first we had used skin and fur. Second, the humans learned how to do weaving. And as they learned how to do weaving, they had made some mats and twigs, uh, mats and baskets using twigs and grasses. Then the third thing was, third step was, then vines and animal fleece and hair were twisted together to get long strands. Then they had started cutting the animal fleece or hair and then they started obtaining fiber from them. Fourth was the cultivation of cotton and other plant fibers like early Indians were often seen wearing cotton and cotton was grown near the river Ganga. Similarly cotton and flax were also seen cultivated in river near river Nile in Egypt. So this was the next step before they had started exploring the plant fabrics they had first explored animal fabric which was using the animal fleece or hair. Then they had started cultivating some of the crops like cotton and flax and they obtained the fiber to get the fiber. Then people then simply draped the fabrics as we just saw sari was being draped by the ladies, dhoti was draped by the men to cover their bodies. Last thing is that the invention of sewing needle was done. And this is how the new the swing needles appeared because they were not made up of the metal that we have these days, the needles, the kind of needles we use these days. These were made from rocks, stones or the bones of the animals. So invention of swing needle had 
happened and because of which then cutting and stitching came into the function. So my dear children, I want you all to take a note of all the notes being shared here in this class in your notebook as your final classwork. Thank you.